since the outbreak started. Wuhan provides hope for the rest of the world that even the most severe situation can be turned around. That's one of the most corrupt displays I think anyone's ever seen on tape. Of course, if other countries wanted to reduce their caseload, they don't want to take the World Health Organization's advice. Just like the CDC in this country, WHO was pushing the absurd claim that face masks somehow don't work and are not useful for containing the coronavirus. China, meanwhile, the country that Tedros never stops praising, did not agree with that. In fact, they were hoarding masks. They were doing it all the way back in January. In fact, you start to wonder how honest the World Health Organization was even giving that advice. You also wonder how honest Dr. Tedros was when he warned against accelerating the use of hydroxychloroquine to fight the virus. Using untested medicines without the right evidence could raise false hope and even do more harm than good. At this point, it's pretty obvious this guy is trying to hurt people. He runs the World Health Organization, and he's intentionally trying to hurt us. If you wanted an effective anti-coronavirus strategy, you would just do everything that Tedros tells you not to. In fact, that's been a pretty solid position to take for a long time. Before he ran the World Health Organization, Tedros was the health minister of Ethiopia. On three separate occasions, three, that country was ravished by cholera epidemics. Tedros lied about it. He refused to admit it was happening, insisted instead it was just an outbreak of, quote, acute watery diarrhea. Hundreds died in those outbreaks, which are only accurately identified when they spread into neighboring countries. In other words, he lied on behalf of the Ethiopian government, which was worried more about tourism and their reputation than people surviving an epidemic. Then he took over the World Health Organization, and Tedros vowed to crack down on corruption at that organization. That hasn't happened either. WHO still spends $200 million a year flying its staff around the world, often in business. That's something other health organizations ban their staff from doing. Doctors Without Borders would never do something like that. Corruption, dishonesty, cover-up, shilling for authoritarian dictatorships, lying as people die? No wonder Tedros and China are such profound allies. Fortunately, people are wising up to this. Even the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, says the World Health Organization should be open to criticism. Where were the warning signs? Who was supposed to blow the whistle? The president has asked this question, and I think he's right. Uh, the president's answer is the World Health Organization should have been uh, blowing the whistle. Uh, I, don't, I don't know enough to know if that's right or wrong, but I know the question is right. The question is certainly right, and the answer is very obvious. They didn't blow the whistle, people died as a result, and they still get to run around calling themselves the World Health Organization. Why should we support corrupt international organizations like this? That's not a partisan political issue. Funding the WHO has only given us a hostile, dishonest bureaucracy that's directly responsible for spreading this pandemic. We should get out of that organization immediately and only fund health organizations that help people and prevent disease. And by the way, there are a lot of them, just not this one.